Welcome to The Red Podcast, a place where bold, inspired, outrageously courageous, and just a tad bit naughty women leaders come together. I'm Elaine Kalila, and I'm the founder of the Priestess Presence Temple, a sisterhood of over 80,000 women. For the past 25 years, I've had the great pleasure and privilege of supporting, inspiring, catalyzing, and initiating women to remember who they are. The Red Podcast is a place where you can come to lean into your edges, listen for that which yearns to be expressed more fully through you, and to say yes to the places that probably scare you. More importantly, I'm going to be talking with some amazing women who are spiritual and grounded, and we're going to be chatting about what it takes for each one of us to step into the legacy of our purpose and fully bring it to the world that we're here to co-create. Your presence is a gift, so I say bring it. We're here to listen to your red, your leading edge, that place of evolution within you. I hope you enjoy the conversations. Well, hello, 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 my fellow red women. It's Elaine Kalila here, and I'm so excited today to get to share with you someone who has been traveling this life path with me for about the last, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years. I'm not even sure how long it is now. Um, Miss Sarah Jenks is here with us, and I've, I've had the great, great honor of witnessing this beautiful woman really come into her power. And what I mean by that is that I have witnessed her go through, I think now, three different business iterations. And I'm here today to talk to her because she is one of the red women who is stepping out of her comfort zone of running her business in a more traditional way, running it from the point of view of being a marketer and being an, a very, very good entrepreneur to recognizing and awakening that she is in fact here to be a priestess and to walk the path of sacred business and to bring her whole business into alignment with deeper underlying sacred principles. I've had the great pleasure of having Sarah as my client, as my sister, as my priestess, um, I don't even know what to say, priestess acolyte, priestess trainee, priestess apprentice for the last few years. And it's been amazing to watch this woman take what she learns in our work together and actually implement it. And so today I wanted to invite her to come here because she is juicy and she is real and she is someone who is able to translate these mysteries across into the mainstream, which I think is a fantastic skill and one that many of us can learn something from listening to her. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, my love, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Red Podcast is all about, as you know, inviting women who are leading from the edge of their hearts, from the edge of their deeper mm -hmm. knowing, creating the world in a new way so that we can actually inhabit the world that we want to see. So I'd love to begin by chatting a little bit about, I'm going to give you a sense of Sarah here for a moment. You can read her bio, but when I first met Sarah, however many years ago that was in memory, um, she was running a business called Live More Way Less. And mm -hmm. she was a weight loss consultant, really. You were coaching yeah. women around how to change how they felt about their bodies. And that was the way that you were in the world. And you came from a pretty preppy background. <laughs> and you didn't really have much to do with the goddess at that point, right? No, not none. <laughs> Nothing to do with the goddess at all. Can you describe how, how you were back then? It, like whenever that was, we met maybe 12 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a go-getter and a hustler and I, I love those parts of myself and sometimes they get in the way. We'll talk about that. Um, but I was a bit shallow and the world <laughs> was the world felt very 3D to me. And, um, but I was like, I was hungry for meaning. Yeah. And I kept looking for meaning in maybe it was in more success, or maybe it was in being thinner, or maybe it was in having a more beautiful house. Like I was hungry for something mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I just kept looking for it in all the places that I was told they would probably be. Um, 
And I had started working with you as my therapist because I had landed in this foreign land known as San Francisco, (laughs) very different from Boston, where I had grown up and New York, where I had lived for the five years prior. And I felt like my whole identity was unraveling and I was Mm -hmm. very down and anxious. Um, And then I walked in one day, probably we'd already been working together for almost a year. And I had no idea, like you had never mentioned the goddess. And I was still pretty shy about the goddess back then too. Yeah. So, it's, you know, and I just thought you were this like regular old therapist who lived down the street from me. And I walked into your office and you had the back jacks on the floor and uh, candles that were burned down. I could smell incense that was like stuck to the pillows, all these beautiful violet pillows and pictures of these gorgeous women on the walls. I didn't even know, I didn't even know who they were. And I just started to cry. And I just looked at you and I said, what happened here? And I felt this eruption in me and this remembering, and it was so different Mm -hmm. than the personality or the, um, like, disguise that I had been wearing, you know, that I had, I had created and orchestrated in order to fit in. My whole life was about fitting in and being accepted and being like so good at the path and being so good at being in the box. And all of a sudden it just all got messed up. And I realized, oh no, (laughs) messed it up. Oh no. I was, I thought I was like super happy in the box. Yeah. I was not. Yeah. I remember. I really remember back then. And so, you know, you began that journey and you started coming into the temple experiences, the training of the priestess with me back then. And I watched you in great glee and excitement as you metamorphosized, right? And really, that's why I want to talk to you today, because Sarah is in a metamorphosis process with me right now, a deep dive that we've been working together for the last, I don't know, six months, and we're still working together through this year. But I watched you metamorphosize from this live more way less kind of packaging right Mm -hmm. which was very much like you said uh, on the surface like what Mm -hmm. do I look like and how do I feel and you know all of that stuff um to this next iteration that was called and is still called whole woman Mm -hmm. and I just want us all feel that shift for a moment from those two frequencies live more way less to whole woman and so I want you to talk a little bit about what happened for you to go into, because I think for many of us, what we what we are traversing, for those of us who are business entrepreneurs, sacred business owners, what, what we're charged with is having to transform our sacred businesses as we transform, right? Yeah. So can you talk about that transition from live more way less to whole woman? Because I remember it being quite a, a big deal for you. Like it took you some time to get there, right? Yeah, it took me like three years. <laughs> Like three years of you being like, Sarah, <laughs> it doesn't seem like this fits anymore. You know, that's right. And, and it was because, you know, my sacred work, the sacred work of a priestess is, is walking as your soul's essence. And I had created this brand around live more way less that was around being palatable. And it was around being liked and it was around having a certain image and it was around looking a certain way. And it was a, it was a tight box that I was trying to fit myself in and it didn't allow for transformation. And, and we started working together during a, during a time when, when in a lot of ways, my life was sort of falling apart. You know, I, I had babies sort of out of the blue and my husband was in residency and my marriage was a mess and it was all this stuff. And so it was so hard for me to, um, I had created this business that required me to be bright and shiny (laughs) instead of being real. 
And the process of, of, be, of living a sacred life is, is being real mm-hmm. and, no, and no longer pretending mm-hmm. that I was somebody that I wasn't, but I had to walk through the, like the gauntlet of will people want to learn from me who I really am, or am I only worthy and helpful if I'm my like proxy? Yeah. You know, if, am I my live more way less Sarah? And so, and the thing is, is there's really no way to know. And that's part of the work is surrendering mm-hmm. to not knowing if people will come along and do the next iteration of my work. And so what I've really seen is that my work in the world and my business has been a big part of my heroine's journey and and me becoming who I am. I use my business as a mirror for how I am showing up as my true self. And so what was so interesting, and I love that we're talking today is, you know, so I transitioned from live more way less to whole woman. And we brought in, um, you know, the wholeness of being who you are. And it was during this time that I started deepening my work with you. And I became more clear that I was here to do more sacred work with women. Cause for a while I was just coming to temple with you and I wouldn't even tell anybody like nobody (laughs) knew. So Jonathan knew that I was going to your house and that we were sitting in a circle, but I wouldn't even tell him what we were doing. Wow. Jonathan's, um, you know that, but I'm telling the women who are listening. Um, and my clients didn't know, nobody knew. It was just something I was doing for me. Mm-hmm. And then part of my work, and like no one was more surprised than me when I would be sitting in ceremony and I would hear so clearly that I was meant to be a priestess. And I was just in shock for years. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. You, that cannot be true. I am a weight loss coach. Like uh-huh. I am, I'm like a white picket fence person. Like I'm not doing that. <laughs> and um, it's probably so funny to people who've like just met me recently. Right. Because I'm, totally I'm out there. <laughs> So I created Whole Woman so I could do sacred work in my program. And I was talking about it more, but it was still like behind the scenes. You know, I, it was like, okay, I'm just going to let it come in just like a little bit. <laughs> and at the time I had bought a house that had a temple in the backyard, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't call it a temple. I called it a moon lodge and we had women's circles. And so I just was, I just kept trying in so many ways to just even make the sacred work um, palatable and approachable, which I think is part of my mission is to be a bridge. But but I, I, what I've been learning is that I can't be a bridge by hiding Mm -hmm. the, the truth of the depth of this work. Yeah. Um, and so really just six months ago, when you and I started this ordination path, it was, it was another level of just really coming out as who I am. And that's been a really fascinating time. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, I want to just let everyone know who's, who's here, you know, some of the things that I I have really celebrated with you, Sarah, and, and I think that this is true for all of us that are on this path where we are charged with the mission of having a business operate from what I would call sacred principles. In other words, our business is not separate to us, that when we're in the art, when we're in the business of transformation, we ourselves have to be transformed by our work in the world. And as such, we are constantly evolving and we must allow ourselves to become more true and more authentic and more real to who we truly are in service to the mission that we have. And so I remember you saying to me, and this goes back probably to, I don't know, 2018 or 19, and we were in England together. Sarah had come to a retreat called Avalon Remembered, which is a beautiful retreat that we run in Glastonbury in the UK, which is around all the sacred sites and is about remembering our priestess sisterhood, right? 
and we were on a bus. It was a very English moment. We we're on a bus with our sandwiches and going going to a going to Avebury, which is this amazing priestess site of all of these standing stones, which was a huge ceremonial site in the west of England. Very, very potent. And I remember you turning to me on the bus and um uh, and we're bopping along these English country roads. And Sarah looks at me urgently. And I think she comes up to me, she goes, Kalila, Kalila, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I know I need to be a priestess. It, I, it's clear to me. What, what do I have to do? I, I need to do this now. And I remember sitting with her and I was like, okay, I hear you. I hear you. And that was maybe four years ago. Yeah. And in this, so, so part of what I want to honor is that we can have a knowing. Mm -hmm. I think for everyone who's listening, you can have a knowing that you're being called to the edge of your own evolution, to dare to express yourself more fully into the world. And then there is the process of change and resistance. And I don't know quite if I'm ready. If I, da, 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 da. How did you know? So, so this is the truth. Is Sarah mm -hmm. is now on her third iteration and today's the day, right? I mean, it's so interesting. We're, we're recording this interview today. It won't drop for a, a couple few weeks here, but we're recording this interview today on the Piscean new moon. And I just woke up this morning to click on my Instagram and I saw that Sarah Jenks had announced the next iteration of her work. So t tell us about what it is. Cause I'm, I really want to track this and then talk a little bit more about what temple is. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, I want to go back and I want to tell a little story because yeah. I think it's important um, for what has completed today. Mm. It really started back in in July when I got very, very sick. That's right. And I, I thought I had a cold and I thought I hurt my neck at the chiropractor and I thought maybe I had COVID and I just, and I didn't have any of those things. And I had one night where I was, I was laying in bed and I had spiked a fever mm -hmm. and I was doing a castor oil pack and I went into a deep meditation because I just, I was starting to get nervous. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And I went into a deep meditation and I saw mother Mary and Mary Magdalene in a cave and they laid me down on a marble slab and they removed all of these energies from my body. And then I was, as I was leaving, Mary Magdalene put her hand right over my heart. And she said, there's going to be one more initiation that you have to go through tomorrow. And I will be with you the whole time. And I woke up in the morning and I know I woke up in the morning and I was getting dressed and Marshall, my son, who's seven said, well, mama, do you have a birthmark on your back too? Cause he has a birthmark on his back. And I said, no. And I had him take a picture with my phone. And I had these two huge bullseyes in the shape of wings coming out of the back of my heart on, in my back. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have Lyme. Yeah. And so I went to urgent care to get a Lyme test and in urgent care, they took my vitals and the physician came in urgently and said, um, Sarah, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you are in complete heart block. And I just called an ambulance and you need to go to the hospital right away. And what had happened was three of my four ventricles in my heart had shut down because of, I had really advanced Lyme. And so I went straight to the hospital and I knew that this was all happening for a very profound reason. And as I was in the hospital, the whole thing was like a waking ceremony. And, you know, one of my shadow parts is that I'm a total workaholic and I really overdo it. And I felt like Mary Magdalene and mother Mary just put me in the hospital and said, Sarah, you got to chill out. And I, I was doing vision work every day. And she said, this is the hospital for tired priestesses and you must recover. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I've been to that one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So I mean, there's so many great stories, but the, the thing I want to tell, and the reason why I mentioned this today is because I asked for, for Mary Magdalene to send me a sign one day when I was in the hospital, because I had a particularly bad night. My heart was not doing well. I was really scared. And I, I asked her for a sign 
And probably three minutes later, the nur- a new nurse walks in and she said, hi, my name is Mary and I'm here to take care of you. And I was like, this literally, I'm here to take care of you. Oh, and I was like, oh my God. And then an hour later, the EKG lady, so like the woman who's literally looking in my heart, she's leaning over, like over my face. And there's this necklace dangling right over my nose. And I, I look at it, I go, is that mother Mary on your necklace? Mm. And she's like, yes, my mother just gave this to me yesterday. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then my mom comes in to visit that same day. And she's telling me this hilarious story about how like randomly out of the blue, she's telling me the story about how, when she was 16, she was like serenading this boy at a school dance. And she goes, you know, that song from Jesus Christ, superstar that Mary Magdalene sings to Jesus. (laughs) And she's like, um, and she thinks that everything will be okay. Everything will be all right. You'll be able to sleep tonight. Like let the weight of the world, like we got it is, is basically how the song goes. And I was just floored because I, the thing I was struggling with was insomnia. My mother would not just randomly talk about Mary Magdalene. This would literally be the only way to like come through a musical reference. And, um, it, it was, it was remarkable. So after that, I had a series of more health issues and I really felt like, you know, I, I scratched my cornea. One of my, my daughter hurt her finger. I got COVID Um, I just felt like the goddess was saying, because I went back to the pattern and I went back to whole woman and I went back to trying, cause it was, it was certainly time for a new process. I was talking about doing temple with you, but I wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. I kept going to like, I just have to do whole woman. I just have to get this to work. I, you know, I just need to grow this company so that it can fund the other companies and da, 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 da. I'll do that later. It was again, is my audience going to still like me if I go Eve, if I let my freak flag fly even more? It was all that fear. And I just kept trying to do these little launches and they weren't working. And then I would get sick and it was just this clear pattern. So finally I said, okay, I finally got the message. I got the message. I'm going to launch a temple. Mm -hmm. And I did. And that's another story. But what was crazy is right after I launched, right when I decided I was going to launch Temple on the solar eclipse, I get an email from a woman, super nice email, saying that she owns the trademark for Whole Woman and I could not use it anymore. And she was totally right. But I thought, you know, she's a chiropractor in Seattle. Like I do totally different work. You know, I didn't worry about it for a while. But I wanted, obviously I want to respect your boundaries. And so again, I just kept listening. Okay, goddess, you've been guiding me so clearly and I wasn't listening. Now I'm going to listen and I'm going to wait and I'm going to listen for what needs to happen. Months went by and then you and I were in a session and I was having a particularly full day. I was in the bath and you said, oh, it's just too bad because I love the word whole and it has its, you know, words and holiness and it's such a great program. And And I just go, Kalila. Holy woman, that is what it is. And when I said the words, holy woman, it took on a completely different frequency and an imprint of the work that we're doing in whole woman. And it elevated it and expanded it to this place that just feels so healing and so needed right now. So today... I I didn't know when I was going to actually tell my larger community. And yesterday I said, you know, it's a new moon tomorrow. I'm saying this to myself. It's a new moon tomorrow. Should it be tomorrow? I don't really know. And I said, God, just send me a sign. And I opened my phone and I went to that, like the Apple photo memory thing came up and it was just this picture of Marshall um, from four years ago, which was the time that I started whole woman. And I clicked on it. It's like those, um, carousels of photos that play a song and Apple just puts it together for you. And it was playing that Mary Magdalene song from Jesus Christ, superstar. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. And like, I don't have that song on my phone. I have never listened to it on Spotify. Like I'm not connected to it at all. I haven't heard it since my mom was singing to me in the hotel room. And I was just said, okay, it's time. It's time. And so 
I just, I've tried so hard to control my business for so long and I just can't. <laughs> well, I, I'm just kicking and screaming, like really yeah. learning yeah. how to, how to run my business with, with the mother because oh. she knows, you know, and it's been so much more fun and beautiful. It's uh, thank you for sharing that story. It's so fun to listen to it and to have known you through that whole process. And what mm -hmm. I want to say as a, as a red woman, which is really the theme of this whole podcast that we're doing here, right? Is this shift that's been so dramatic in you of learning how to listen to the deeper messages, to the synchronicities, to the symbolic information that is coming to us all the time, by the way. Mm -hmm. And rather than using your pragmatic, logistical, strategic mind to push it away and say, well, no, that's not the way it needs to be. It needs to be like this. Actually allowing that intuitive, psychic, feminine flow, right? That, that connection into mother, into the listening of the Mary Magdalene songs and the Mother Mary, you know, mm -hmm. showing up for you in, in these initiations mm -hmm. has been what has shifted your work mm -hmm. to actually have you now step in to holy woman. And when yeah. you feel that transition, that metamorphosis from live more, way less to whole woman, to holy woman, there is a, I mean, that that's, that's a memoir right there, right? I know. <laughs> that's a whole sacred entrepreneurship memoir of how we, have to be willing to be courageous mm -hmm. and i and I, what i keep hearing you say sarah and it's so fascinating because this is when i think back to that very first, first day when you walked into therapy with me all those years ago the very the issue that was always there was that you needed people to like you and you mm -hmm. were the popular girl and you were the one that was the you know the party host and mm -hmm. the, the every you know you were the one that everybody was like oh sarah's great we love sarah right and there's truth to that. Sarah's still that. And you've also really looked at the wounding behind that mm -hmm. and the place where that would stop you from your true dharma, from your real mission. Exactly. And your real mission is actually to help other women who are terrified of being seen as weird or mm -hmm. somehow out there or witchy or that that's not the way you were raised or you're the black sheep of the family, right? Is your work is all about creating spaces for those women to find community, to find sisterhood, to find temple, to find themselves mm -hmm. and to be able to honor that truth whilst honoring their roots at the same time, because you are who you are, right? You were raised right. in Boston. You were raised in a very traditional kind of, you know, East coast pick, white picket fence. These are the values, right? And I say, always jokes with me and said, you know, she was groomed to become a Senator, not a priestess, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but she's our Senator priestess. <laughs> and, right? So I just really want to celebrate you and, and the process that we've been in and what I've had the great privilege of witnessing as you, when you went last year and you went through all those health challenges, by the way, I also went through the health challenges too. So we've been in kind of a parallel process. Cause I got, I got, for those of you who don't know, and I'll perhaps do an episode around this, but I, I really got slapped down by COVID last mm -hmm. year in quite a profound way. And it, things had to really shift for me in my sacred business also. And actually the red podcast, this offering is in part as a result of that initiation for me. So I'll do some more talking about that in another episode. The piece that I'm really want to ask in this moment is on this day where you're announcing holy women, she just and I saw and I saw what was so cool everybody was Sarah had sent me a little sketch of like hey Kalila this is what I think it's going to look like and it had roses on it and a snake on it like it, and today I got to see you've got it made it's like someone yeah. created it for you I know I'm it was blown away so is, by the way one of Sarah's secret sources is that being she may be a workaholic but she's also an excellent excellent marketer mm -hmm. which is another transition that we've talked about a lot, right? Is, is like, as a sacred business owner, you've really been at the front front end of your marketing and being really the marketing engine behind your business. And now you're shifting that as well mm -hmm. to actually sit more in the center of your business and priestess your business. Yeah, it's been really hard. The transition. Talk about that for a moment. What's been really yeah. hard about it? Well, 
So much of it is the dance between control and surrender. And (laughs) isn't it always? (laughs) Yeah. And also like what's accepted and what's not accepted in in society and how we run businesses and the ways that I've internalized that, you know, and you've really helped me see that the ways that I show up in my business really show what I have accepted as truth in me. So you know, and I still struggle with this, like it's better, but I still have some work to do around, um, like really honoring the worth and the importance of doing frequency work in order to amplify my business. What does that mean? Slow it down for a second. Yeah. So So, like the energetics, the, Mm -hmm. my energy like what I am working on really owning and accepting hundred percent of the time is that my energy is the number one determinant of whether or not people decide to work with me. Yes. That it is not how many emails I send out of my inbox or how great the marketing slogan is or the timing of things or how often I post on social media, because if, if me behind those emails and those social media posts are stressed out Mm -hmm. or anxious because I'm so focused on the marketing Mm. and it it will not work. Yeah. And, and so there's a strategy behind that, but like the thing that's been so important for me to really look at is that just so clearly shows where I am still not accepting my own power. Mm-hmm. And if I am walking this path and saying, I am a priestess and this is important, priestesses are important to have in the world. I also have to be in alignment with priestesses. My, my talents as a priestess, my priestess work is important in the way I run my business. Exactly. Instead of telling myself, Sarah, that's not important. Like no one cares about the energy that you're like cultivating by talking to trees in the morning, you know, but they do this, Mm -hmm. this form. And this is what we're rebirthing on the planet is that this is a form of communication. That's important that we've forgotten as in, in humanity. And we are reweaving it. You know, you're talking about the language of science. That's part of it. And so, um, Cause it looks like it could, you know, when I'm doing my best work, it looks like from the outside world that I'm doing nothing. Woo. That's so important that we say that because yeah. we have such a judgment about doing nothing. Right. Yeah. And being busy, looking busy, doing the best right. work is, is what we're told is how we're going to achieve things. Yeah. This really turns everything on its head because what you're really saying is creating spaciousness inside your business to allow there to be time for you to be empty which is a core priestess skill right to listen to receive the intuition to receive such a thing as holy women which is brilliant by the way right because it's such an iteration it's Mm -hmm. such a um an evolution of whole woman and i remember the moment when that happened we were both like ah that's it that's it we could see the whole thing right that would never have happened if you weren't listening to the deeper levels. And I think mm-hmm. this is the thing is, is when we're doing the work of transformation in the world, which so many of us are, and we don't align our business, our sacred business to be founded upon those principles, then we're not in integrity. No, there's a clash between how we appear to be on the outside and what we're actually practicing on the inside. Mm-hmm. And so learning how to have your business, right, become a temple. Mm-hmm. How to have your business be something that's amplifying a bigger truth out there into the world and that you are the center point of that business is a completely different way of leading. Completely. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's so important to like you, you just really have told me this over and over again, who you are. What is wrong with we have to be so um attuned to the energy we're putting out there Mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work it's different work Mm -hmm. and it's work that um you know i'm called to and i'm sure a lot of the women who are listening are called to Mm -hmm. 
but when I, when I'm doing it, when I'm really fully committed, I just, I feel like myself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So I'm going to ask you a question right now. So how are you doing? Cause I know that, you know, this wound that you've had about not fitting in and, um, that you're going to fly the freak flag and you're going to lose all of your followers and your, your business is going to suffer. Right. Um, how are you feeling about that piece at this point? I lost you. Oh, I lost you. Will you say that last part oh, yeah. again? Yeah. Let's, let's start that piece again. So I, I know this core wound that you've been working inside of yourself, which is so seminal to the work that you actually do in the world. So there isn't like a make wrong about it. It's actually the gold of your work. Um, because every time you share this in the world that you're fearful of being this, all the women who are also fearful get to come and be part of the conversation. Right? So. I've witnessed you in the last six months putting these temple experiences out, the fabulous temple experiences, and we're going to share how you can come and um, be part of one of those if you're interested. But I'm curious about what you've been confronting in self as you've been doing that and allowing yourself to do the work finally, mm -hmm. to put temple out there and to say this is a temple. So what has happened internally and shifted? Yeah, you know, um, well, the shadows that have come up as I've started to create my own temple mm -hmm. are um, like, do I need to make sure they have a transformational process? Like, you know, my like inner life coach will come out like, oh, this is the this is the transformation that you will have when you come to the temple. Like that's a, that's like a part of me that comes out that I'm, you know, working on silencing. Um, you know, there's, I definitely have moments when we're dropping into empty presence for the first time. And I know we have newbies in the room where I'm just worried about them. Like, are you going to be okay? Are you nervous? Um, like, so it's sort of mother bear ish, mm -hmm. but what I've learned from you is that the best way to make women feel safe is to hold such a coherent field. Mm -hmm. And so that means I have to, this is, I love when you say this to me, Sarah, you got to just run that freak flag all the way up the pole. <laughs> you got to run it all the way up the pole. When you're in temple, this is not the time to be the translator. Like you've got to hold a coherent frequency and all, and so it's, you know, I do it for me. Like I do this mm -hmm. temple work for me mm -hmm. to have a place to let my, like all of my magical parts really come out and be front and center. And I have other programs where I do focus more on translating and bring pe bringing people through a journey and doing all those things. Mm -hmm. um, but, in, oh, I just, there's a deer right outside my window. Oh, how beautiful. Look at that. Um, so, oh, and a baby, a mama and a baby. Oh, sweet. Okay. So just noticing, is it the lady of communion moon today? Mm -hmm. um, oh. No, we're in the new moon. We're great mother. Great mother. Okay. Great mother moon today. So, yeah, but, but there's something about that mother and baby energy that you were just talking about, right? There's nature talking back to you is really yeah. what you're noticing with that baby deer. Yeah. You know, you. I know that we need to wrap this up pretty soon, but I, I want to ask you the three red questions that I have for Ooh. all red women. So are okay. you ready? Are no. you ready for some red questions? Okay. So red, who is also known as the Magdalene and the Magdalenas of all throughout all time, throughout all history, women who have stood as watchtower women, women who have stood as midwives of the change of the epochs that we are currently in. And as red women, I want to ask you, what are you devoted to, Sarah? Mm. I am devoted to normalizing the sacred feminine. Woohoo, I like that. What do you avoid but secretly yearn to express? Ooh, just like my wild, sensual feminine. That's why oh. you got that snake in your new logo, huh? Exactly. Yes. I know that wild feminine. I think there's many of us who still have some level of hold up around really letting that rip, really mm -hmm. letting ourselves feel that. Mm -hmm. What is the most revealing thing about you that you hide? Oh, that is so good. The most revealing thing about me that I hide. I 
I just am so in to like earthly delights, you know, like I just, coming from a Puritan background, I can sort of want to put myself in like a box and appear um, just like above it all. But the truth is, is like, if there's a chocolate cake, like I want to roll in it, you know, and and I want to wear all the velvet and like rub all the oils all over my body. And just like, I love money and I love my like gorgeous furniture and I love my beautiful clothes. And it's just like, give me all the earthly delights sensual earthly delight and we're taught to have shame around that right there's still all this this imprint that somehow us being into the joy of being here and enjoying our lives mm -hmm. is somehow wrong and i really want to say as red women leading from the edge part of what we're standing in is is that we can be fully expressed in all these aspects of ourselves and at the same time we can be awake to what's happening in the world and be a part of birthing something new into creation that addresses some of the anguish that we see in the world. It's not, they're not separated. And I think for so long, I know I've had that truth. Like I used to feel like I really wasn't allowed to live a good life because so many others weren't allowed to or didn't have the privilege of living a good life. Yeah. And I had a tremendous amount of guilt about that for a lot of my life. Yeah, I know. And many of us who are in a privileged position, especially those of us who are in white bodies, who have been born into this life, we have privilege. And what I've come to understand about that privilege is that there's a responsibility to having that privilege and we need to be responsible to using that privilege in service. Mm -hmm. and so I just want to honor that in you and the marriage of your sacred work in the world and your earthly delights, because mm -hmm. all of it's real. Okay, the final question I have for you, I've been asking everybody this because Magdalene has been speaking in my ear and she said, okay, we're going to play a game. So R-E-D stands for? Oh, okay, this is what's coming. Yeah. Uh, roses. It doesn't make sense in a sense, but it's what I'm saying. Roses ever dream. Oh, I like that. Roses ever, ever dream. dream. We're collecting all of these. I'm going to make a poem out of them at some point. Oh, I love that. That's so be another red spoken word piece that will mm -hmm. come through, but I'm um, collecting them from everyone I'm interviewing. So roses ever dream. Oh, I like that. That goes mm -hmm. along with one, which was last week's, which was rebellious, ecstatic diva. Oh, yes. I love that. <laughs> rebellious. The static diva. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <a> red woman. <laughs> you are a red woman. So you might play that game at home for yourself. So Sarah, tell us about the next upcoming temple that you've got yeah. on that sisters could come and um, participate with you. Yeah, thank you. So, so the Temple of Remembrance is a sacred feminine church, so mm. to speak. Mm. So it's not a program or a retreat or or membership or something that you have to come and join. It's, it's just, it's a sacred community. It's sacred practice. We have, we have women who have never gone to temple. We have priestesses from the 13 moon community. We have other healers. I mean, I just, I'm blown away by the women who are coming to these temple experiences to have time to just practice mm -hmm. and to be with themselves and to be with the goddess and to be with each other. And you can come in person to my home temple outside of Boston. And I live stream it with a professional camera team all over the world. And what's really fun is that when you come on live stream, you can invite as many people to your home as you want. So what ends up happening is we don't just have a hun hundreds of individuals. We actually have hundreds of circles all over the world who are gathering um, to be in temple together. I love it. I, and so I just, oh. it's just, re it's really special. We have circles in Taiwan and we have circles in Europe and we have circles in South America. We have circles in Australia. I mean, it's just, it's really amazing. Wonderful. And so the next one is upcoming on Beltane, right? May yeah. 1st. But it's actually Bel Fr Beltane Friday. 
Beltane Friday. Got it. So you can find out all the details to this on Sarah's show notes and her link to her website, link to her Instagram, which is really where you can find her because she is. She is an Instagram mama. This I am. She really yeah. is. She's been teaching me all about Instagram, y'all. I'm a bit, I, I'm a bit of an, a generation ahead okay. of her. You are, great. you are doing great. And Kalila, I just want to say one more thing before we complete today. Yeah. N- none of this would be possible without you. Oh, sweetheart. And I'm just so grateful mm. for, for your soul saying yes to, to taking me on as a project. <laughs> <laughs> and to a life project. You know, to being my guide and my mentor and my friend and my teacher. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for you. So thank you so much. As I am for you, as I am for you. I'm into long-term relationships. You might all have understood that by now. (laughs) I have a long-term relationship situation with most of the people that I end up mentoring, which is really part of our soul family because we're kin together and, Mm -hmm. and your success is my success. And that's, what's really true. So if any of you want to find out more about what Sarah's been talking about and the metamorphosis rite of passage and deep mentorship that I offer, you can find out about that on my website at elainekalila.com. And um, I don't take very many people on at that level, but if you're really called and you're ready to make a shift in your business and you've been successful, but you know that you're ready for that evolutionary change and you've been seeing the signs and experiencing that, then I am here to support women who are really ready for that kind of deep dive. So, oh, I have so much fullness in my heart, Sarah. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your journey with us today, because I think one of the things that's so important about what you have shared is that when we are in sacred business, when we choose to step up to the mission that we came here to serve, you can always expect to be initiated upon it. And rather than seeing those initiations as being, oh, I'm doing it wrong, is to really listen to what you're being guided toward. And what I wanna celebrate you for is what happened last year changed you and you finally listened to the places that really scared you. And what you're discovering is as you step closer into the truth of what you're here to do, you're not losing women in your community, you're gaining them. I know. And it's really happening. It's so beautiful. I know. And I'm witnessing it. I'm over here on the sidelines witnessing what's happening. And so that's what I want to leave you all with is as we step more into the truth of who we are in our sacred businesses, in where we're leading in the world, we will have more impact. Our legacy will be greater Mm -hmm. because the imprint that we're putting out there into the world is more true and authentic and honest. And that is what we're really all about in this world of the divine feminine is Mm -hmm. celebrating the truth of who we are and the gifts that we carry. So with that said, I love you. I can't wait. I get to be with Sarah a lot this year. She's kind of going to come and assist in retreats that we're running and we've got all kinds of wonderful plans. So I'm excited that we finally get to be together. I hope you do. It's the best. Actually in person. Oh my God. And to everyone else who's here, thank you for listening and much love to your day. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of The Red Podcast. It's been an honor to have you here with us. As Red Women, we are here leading from the edges of our own evolution birthing new worlds into being through our bodies, our hearts, our minds, and our beautiful presence. If you would like to be in contact with me, I love hearing from you. You can find me on Instagram at elaine.kalila or over on my website, elainekalila.com. And lastly, I'd like to invite you, if you loved this episode, to go ahead and share this with someone that you think might enjoy it too. It's through us sharing our hearts with one another and inspiring one another that we reveal our red, that evolutionary edge that is just waiting to be fully expressed in all aspects of our world. Until next time, many, many blessings.